Yo guys, what is up? We are back with another recap slash rent. This week it was the Falcons versus the Buccaneers. Man, I wish I was out there uh, in Tampa Bay to go to that game. But obviously we live in Atlanta. I can't wait to find natural freedom, man. So we go whatever game we want to, man. But anyway, the final score was 16 to 13. I would have to say this was the most unpredictable game I've ever seen in my life as far as a Falcon game. Uh, I hate to bring up bad stuff, but this was, this felt like how the Super Bowl game was. It was like, when you think that you had it, it get taken away, one yard line, crazy, ridiculous stuff happening, man. But anyway, let's get straight into it. Um, let's start off with the Buccaneers. As y'all know, I like to start with the, off with the away team, and then we're going to start off with the Falcons, and then talk about it and all the other stuff. So anyway, the Buccaneers, man, like I said, 13 points to the Falcons, 16 this game was crazy, man. All right, first of all, Baker Mayfield, 27-42, 274 yards, a touchdown interception. Baker Mayfield, I actually like Baker Mayfield. He did what he needed to do. Um, he wasn't doing nothing too crazy, but I, I like his drive. I like his attitude. I like that he wanted to do it. But obviously, our defense came to play, man, so he did what he needed to do, but um, they couldn't pull it out, but they almost did. Um their running back had 13 carries for 34 yards. Or I think his name was Shot White. We really held them to uh, a low amount of yards. Baker Mayfield, three carries, 32 yards. Average 10.7 yards a carry. And especially on that last drive they had before they kicked that field goal. Baker Mayfield playing his freaking butt off. Mike Evans, six catches, 82 yards. Chris Godwin, six catches, 66 yards. You know what I'm saying? It was it was decent, man. They, they, they offense, they didn't go too crazy, but they did. You know, enough. They almost won the game, but they didn't win the game. The defense on both sides freaking played crazy. Um, Jamel Dean on their side, which number 35, had nine tackles, one assist. Avante David was all over the field, eight tackles, five assists. Um, it, it was just freaking insane, man. That's why Winfield had a crazy strip. It, it was nuts, man. Shaquille Barrett had a sack. All right, enough of all of that, man. Let's get to the Falcons. Like I said, it was nothing too crazy for the Buccaneers. I respect the Buccaneers. They're cool. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, obviously, it would have been nice to be down there and stuff like that. Uh, there was nothing really too flashy that I could be like, oh, man, that was awesome or whatever. Their defense did what they needed to do, but let's get into the Falcons, man. First of all, Bijan, I don't know. Let me, let me talk about this. What is up with the Falcons every single year? It's always somebody that's not feeling good, man. I know Calvin really had his issues, but he was like, man, I don't feel like coming. Then you have Marcus Mariota saying last season, well, he don't feel like it. Now, B. John Robinson, he don't feel good. I don't understand what's going on at locker room. I don't understand what's going on with the morale of the team. But I don't know about none of that. But it's just crazy how it's always on us. Hopefully, he doesn't quit the team. And, you know what I'm saying? I don't know what's going on. I don't know if they're saying that because the coach wanted to prove that Desmond Ritter is the guy. He don't need B. John. I don't know what's going on. But I will say that I like the fact that Cordero Patterson played this game. I love that. I love that. I love the. I feel like the first drive was, or first two drives was the best coaching uh, of the game for Arthur Smith. I don't know why later on down the line, he he simplifies everything. I like they give him their best they got when they first start off, and then they don't really dwell too too much into the playbook later on. I don't know what that's about, but it is what it is. But anyway, man, let's go ahead and get into the Falcon stats. Desmond Ritter, nineteen for twenty five, two hundred forty nine yards, zero. Th- uh, passing touchdowns, but zero interceptions. He did form the ball two times, or was it three times? Two times, something like that. Um, Tyler Algier, 21 carries, 59 yards. Cordero Patterson, 10 carries, 56 yards, average 5.6. Uh, Desmond Ritter, 6 carries, 38 yards, 6.3. Bijan had that one carry on the last drive. Um, and Drake London had 6 catches, 54 yards. Tyler Algier, 3 catches, 53. Kyle Pitts had made a clutch reception at the end of the game. Three receptions, 47 yards. Um, as far as the offense, like I said, I like Desmond Ritter. I know people was like, oh, man, get him out of here. I don't know why you guys are trying to, like, do this man like that so early. You know what I'm saying? He's basically a rookie. If you really think about it, I told you, he only played four games last year. And this is his first time really being in that spotlight. Last year, he beat Tom Brady. You know what I'm saying? I don't care if y'all say, oh, he got taken out. He beat Tom Brady last year. So I figured he can come in and beat Baker Mayfield. Um, in this game, pretty much the same personnel. You know what I'm saying? Last year we had CP and stuff like that. So I like how we utilized the talent this time. I wish uh, Scotty Miller had more 
receptions this game. When he did make a big play against his former team, I feel like we should use him a lot more. Glad that we used him out there. Glad we used CP. Tyler did good. Um, Drake, um, it was, yo, this game was crazy, man. I cannot believe that both times on each end of the field, we fumbled on a one-yard line, which was, was freaking insane. We could have had 24 touchdowns this game, but it's like, well, it could go wrong, went wrong. But the fact that we was able to still win this game after literally trying to get this game away, that's what I'm talking about, man. That's what I'm, that's what I'm saying. This game was was one of those games I'm looking like, bro, what the heck is going on? There's no way. Like, it felt like the Super Bowl. Like, I felt like we was breaking down, and it's like no possible way that you can, like, you, you, you can't predict it. It was like, what the, like, are we about to, oh, we about to score, let's go. Like, I was happy, and then I'm like, yo, we fumbled the ball again on the one-yard line? It, it's crazy, man. But anyway, real quick on the defense. Uh, like I said, Jeff Okuda had six tackles. Jeff Okuda, from visually watching it, this was his best game, man. This man was everywhere. The whole defense was getting holding calls and all the other stuff. Um, at first, AJ Terrell was getting messed up by Mike Evans, but then after a while, he started doing pretty good, man. He was following him around the field, breaking up some passes, making some good tackles. Shout out to AJ Terrell, man. And shout out to Nate Lambie, number 53. Came up with a big promo for us. Um... That helped us get the ball and get field position, even though we didn't go too crazy because we only had 16 points this game. Um, Richie Grant with a nice interception. By the way, shout out to Jalen uh, Hawkins, man. I hate that we released that man, but and right when we released him, he in the training camp for the other team he went to, he was carted off the field and stuff like that. Wish Jalen Hawkins was still on the team. Glad Richie Grant is um, able to step up, five tackles, two uh, assisted, and that clutch interception at the end of the game to set us up. To pretty much win, and all the defense had to do was stop them again, and all the other stuff. Good stuff right there, because they was looking like they was in position to score a touchdown. So good stuff right there. Caden Ellis, number fifty-five, four tackles, um, three assisted. The dude, Caden Ellis, I like Caden Ellis. Caden Ellis. I think when Troy Anderson gets back, if we go to like a four-three wide set when it's three linebackers in the backfield, I feel like having Troy in the middle, Caden on the left. Um, and Nate Landman on the right, I think that would be great, man. I feel like our linebacking core is really good. It's underrated in the league. These guys are out there going crazy. Uh, Jesse Bates had five tackles, one assisted. No picks for Jesse this game, but I like to see that the defensive coordinator was was blitzing this man out there, man. Yo, that man was blitzing heavy. I'm talking about, yo, we, we having safety blitzes out here? That reminded me of when Jamal Adams had first moved to the Seahawks. And then we had played him that year. That man was going crazy. He single-handedly beat us that year. Um, I think that was one of the first. Uh, that that game was crazy. That, that I remember that game. Anyway, Calais Campbell, as you already know, I talk about this man every single week. Calais Campbell, uh, I believe he had his best game this game. So I just said Calais Campbell, man. Uh, thank you for showing up. Showing that veteran, you know what I'm saying? Showing that his, his, his skill set out there. He got a set this game. Um, Daniel, Daniel Automata had got a clutch second in the game. Lorenzo Carter had got a sack after he was getting dominated at, at the beginning of the game. So we had, what? how many is that? We had three sacks this game against a good offensive line. Um, so that was great to see, man. It, it was good to see the defense really pretty much was locked up, man. They only scored 13 points, which means they only scored one touchdown uh, pretty much. And the offense... We got we to gotta do better. We got to clean some stuff up. Obviously, like I said, we got to stop with the penalties. Defense, we got to stop with the penalties. But it was penalty, obviously, today on both sides of the ball. Hold on. I, I would have to say, I was watching the game the whole time, obviously. Yo, number 67 on the Buccaneers offensive line was holding the entire game. They wasn't calling nothing. Every every replay, it was like this dude was holding. Like, he was just grabbing his shoulders. And I guess they say when you inside, they don't call it. But it really looked like this man was just holding the entire game. But like I said, as a game overall, this was this was like it was a weird game. It was, it was one of those games where I was like, "How the freak are we gonna win this game?" But the fact, like I said, that we did everything to lose and we won, and now we're number one in the division. That's what I'm talking about right there, man. We went out there in Tampa Bay and the Sunshine State. And we, we, we took care of business, man. Now Desmond Ritter is 2-0 and against the Buccaneers. And he finally gets his first role win. I just realized that. 
Last week he lost at home for his first time since like high school, and now he gets his first road win in his career against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So good stuff right there, man. Way to bounce back from losing your first into winning your first. Um, crazy how stuff like that works. But anyway, man, we gotta we, <laughs> we gotta clean that stuff up. We gotta hold on to the ball. Hopefully, Bijan feels a lot better. Hopefully, even when Bijan gets back, we still use CP. Hopefully, we use Scotty Miller some more. And, you know, Kyle Pitts, you know, all of these guys, Hodge, uh, Jefferson, we still need to utilize our, our talents the best uh, that we can. So, good stuff to everybody. The game could have went either way. It was GG's. Even, we even if we would have lost this game, I feel like that was GG's all the way, man. It was, like I said, penalties on both sides of the ball. That We was fighting. It wasn't a high-scoring game, even though I know people like to watch high-scoring games because, you know, that's the entertainment, that's the excitement. It's, it was way better than that Super Bowl when the Rams went against the Patriots that year. That was trash. But um, <laughs> but this game, it was it was fun to watch. And it was fun to get the victory. And it was cool to see cool, you know, go out there. Even in the game, Keith Armstrong, our old special teams coordinator, went up to him. He was like, you know, good job. You know, pat him on the shoulder. So to Keith Armstrong. His intros uh, at the Falcons games was hilarious. We were talking about getting the dang job done and all that other stuff. He said some of the words, but I'm trying to keep it clean. But, um, yeah, man, so, well, Falcons are four and three. We number one in the division. So, that that's good to see. Um, nothing, like I said, too crazy this game, man. We just got to <laughs> not fumble the ball. I like this mirror a lot. Y'all got to get off my boy back. He almost had another 300-yard game, but he had 249. And he came in clutch. I told y'all last week was the first time he didn't come in clutch. I told y'all that. He's a clutch player. That was his first time, and I told you I'm glad it happened. I didn't want it to happen, but I'm glad it happened. So he can get that that extra pressure out of the way. Oh, he always got to come back. No, but now he can realize, oh, shoot, I made a mistake. Let me clean it up. Let me come back. Let me put these people wrong. He could have had two rushing touchdowns in this game, but he had one rushing touchdown. And that's what I'm talking about right there, man. So good stuff by us. I'm glad Arthur Smith kicked that field goal instead of going for it on that fourth down. I think everybody realized that uh, even the commentators were like, oh, Arthur Smith about to kick for the field goal and fourth and goal or whatever he was talking about. And I'm like, yeah, because of what happened last week, you don't want to get flamed again. And if the offense hasn't been doing good, why keep trying to force it if it's not there? So we kick the field goal, and we end up winning by three points. So good coaching uh, right there by Arthur Smith. I like to see Arthur Smith pipe on the sideline. Dude was running up and down the field going crazy. Um, I would have been reacting the same way if I seen it up close like that. Because this game, like I said, was insane. I don't know what the heck is going on, but that was that was nuts. <laughs> um, what else we got, man? I think that's pretty much it. Like I said, respect to Baker Mayfield. Good stuff to Desmond Ritter. Good stuff to Kyle Pitts. Obviously, Ty Bowles. Highly decorated coach. Good stuff to him over there. We beat Todd Bowles, man. You got to think about that. These guys were Super Bowl champions a, a few years back. I know they had Brady and stuff like that. Uh, the Baker Baby Mayfield is not a bum. Like, everybody be saying, oh, they're probably going to flame him for throwing that pick. But the dude put his team in position, but it's more than just one guy. You know, so same thing with us. We went out there and we did what you need to do. So, um, yeah, let's, so who, who the heck do we play next week? Like I said, this rant was, you know, it was cool. And, uh... I was about to say something, but yo, where the heck are <laughs> for the guys on the internet, man? Where the heck are they finding these people for the like the the water people, man? That's all I gotta say. If y'all watch the game, y'all know exactly what I'm talking about. Shout out to the uh, <laughs> shout out to the staff, man. That's all I'm gonna say. Uh, keeping it clean over here. Who the heck do we play on? Oh, we play the Titans. I don't. Whoa, that's the next game. We play the Titans. On the 29th in Tennessee. So, next week we have another away game going against the Titans. We'll see how that goes. That's other Smith's old team. So, let's see how that correlates together. And let's see how it goes, man. Obviously, Julio is not on the team no more. Um, and Julio was not on the Buccaneers anymore. But now he's on the Eagles. So, we don't have to worry about that. But we do have to worry about Derrick Henry. So, let's see how that goes, man. Um, I predict that we win this game. But Arthur Smith didn't do too good against his... Old coaches we had. I think last time we played the 49ers, I don't know if we won or lost. I think we lost or something like that. 
And then we lost against Dan Quinn or whatever that year. I don't know what the heck. That was a long time ago, but we got to do better, man. So, and we will do better. We got to clean this stuff up. So, next, keys to the game next time. Keep CP in, even if Bijan is healthy. Use Scotty Miller a lot more like he did this game. That deep ball was, was nice. And continue to let Eddie Terrell travel on the number one receivers. And Jeff Okuda, good job. Um, there we go. That's it, man. That's my rant. Appreciate y'all. We're going to roll to 2K, man. That's what I'm talking about. Shout out to everybody watching the shorts, the live streams, the videos, the regular videos, liking it up, thumbs it up. Hey, man, like I said, we're on the road to the monetization, 4,000 hours watch, all the other stuff, man. We're we on the road to do bigger and better things. Like I said, hug your mama, hug your dad, tell them you love them. Go outside and get some fresh air, just smile and appreciate life. That's all I got to say, man, because we are coming, we moving, and I can't wait, man. I can't wait to. I'm trying to tell you. If I ever, like I told you, if I get to that point, because um, I don't really blog at the home games because I ain't really got that. I don't know. It feels funny. But if I go to an away game and, like I said, I'm financially free, I ain't got to worry about working under that, I'm vlogging the experience for sure, man. I can't wait till I reach that point when you got to worry about, oh, man, it's Sunday, I got to work the next day. We ain't trying to do none of that. But shout out to the Falcons. We on to next week. We're going to Tennessee. Let's go.